Hey everyone, today I'm going to talk about one of the more important concepts in Google Sheet functions, which is the difference between relative and absolute cell reference. So for our example here, we have a school supplies order with the item, the quantity ordered, the price per unit, and then in this last column, we're going to have the total price. So to get the total price of the notebooks, 50 notebooks at $1.29 a notebook, we'll type in equals and see it already suggests that C6 times D6. So quantity times price, we'll hit enter and we get 6450 and then we see at the bottom the total 6450. Now what we can do, instead of entering that in in each row, instead of entering equals C7 times D7 equals C8 times D8, what we can do is just drag this function down and in relative cell reference the function will copy. So relative cell reference is when the location of the cells relative to the location of the formula stay the same. So if we drag this down one and then click on this formula, double click it, you'll see that it's C7 times D7. It knows that we dragged the row number down so the row numbers in the formula also go down. That's relative cell reference. So we can drag it all the way down. And then all, all nine of these total prices are correct. You can double click on any of them. And you'll see in yellow is the quantity and in purple is the unit price. And it's the correct option due to relative cell reference. And relative cell reference is assumed. So additionally, if we dragged to the right, the column letter would change and the row number would stay the same. So if we dragged C14 times D14 one to the right, for example, we would then have D14 times E14. It would also drag those one to the right, but the row number would stay the same. So that's relative cell reference. Now let's talk about absolute cell reference. So let's get rid of all of these. And then say we wanted the quantity times the price times the tax rate. So simply for notebook, you would type in equals and you would do C6 again times D6 and then let's put those in parentheses and then we'll do times one plus the tax rate so then we hit enter and we get the total which includes the tax rate now if we drag this down all the way we have a lot of errors that's because if you click on the second one you have c7 times d7 times one plus E4, because it drags everything down. But we don't want it to drag the tax rate down, so let's get rid of all of these, because these are all wrong. Now, how are we gonna keep the tax rate from changing its row? Using absolute cell reference, we put a dollar sign before the number three. And what a dollar sign does in a function is it keeps that number or letter the same. So now when we drag down, row three for the tax rate will stay the same. We'll get, we'll go, you see up here, C6 times D6 times one plus E dollar sign three. If we drag it down, we'll get C7 times D7 times one plus E dollar sign three because the dollar sign is an absolute reference that keeps that row the same. So let's hit enter. Now, if we drag it all down, there are no errors. And if you look in this area here, in the function bar, you see that the C7, D7, C8, D8, those change. The quantity and unit price adapt, but the tax rate remains constant. So that's absolute cell reference, when the reference cell does not move as the function cell is dragged. Now, if we have dollar sign, E dollar sign three, for example, that would be where the column and row do not change when copied. So if you drag it to the right, 
If you drag it to the right, the column letter would stay the same. If you drag it down, the row number would stay the same. So if you had two dollar signs, one for the letter, one for the number, that cell will be the absolutely reference cell no matter where you drag it. In this example where you have the dollar sign before the number, the row does not change. If you have the dollar sign before the letter, the column does not change. So in summary, a dollar sign placed before the letter or number makes an absolute reference from a relative cell reference. And that's pretty much it. That's relative and absolute cell reference in a nutshell. Um, when you get into more complex functions, you, you're not going to want to type them out over and over again. So you're going to have to use relative and absolute cell reference. And this is a pretty good example of how they work. Um, if you found this video useful, I really appreciate a like, comment, and please subscribe. I'm planning on making some more videos now. Um, so stay tuned for that. Thank you.